Hey, 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 what's up, YouTube? Just want to do, uh, do a little intro here on the video that I'm about to piece together for you and put out. And that way you can uh, decide if you want to watch it or what it's about or fast forward it or skip it all together, you know, whatever floats your boat. But uh, I know people are out there looking at these uh, fourth generation gold wings. So uh, I want to tell you just a, real quick, just a little about a bit about what the video is going to be. So I don't have to type a bunch of stuff in the uh, description. So basically, you know, like I've said before, my video, my, my channel is not a how to. There's other channels out there, other forums on, on how to do certain stuff step by step. Um, I did a bunch of maintenance on this video and serviceable items and I, I just kind of showcase that when I got the parts off. I uh, show you what, they, what condition they were in, what it looked like, what I'm going back with, um, maybe some tips and tricks that uh, I learned along the way or, or heard about. So anyway, uh, in this video, I have to look at my notes here. In this video, uh, you know, the, some of the things I did, I rebuilt the petcock, put a new fuel filter on. Of course, it had a K&N air filter, cleaned that, re-oiled that. Uh, I changed out the two little filter elements. One's a sub air filter or the secondary air filter. It's a small one. And then the cruise control element. So those two elements are changed. I had a leaking shifter seal. Uh, I replaced that and then I put the shifter brace on there which turned it into a brand new shifting bike and then I built uh, rebuilt the uh, clutch slave cylinder uh, flushed the clutch fluid flushed all the brake fluid which all that's dot for uh, brake fluid um, I changed the cornering lights uh, snipped the wires and changed the corner cornering lights to drive lights and changed those bulbs to LED uh, bulbs uh, I did a synchronization on the carburetors, did that. I changed the final drive oil, and then I changed the fork oil, and then I took it to the shop. It had new tires, wheel bearings, and they ended up putting new fork seals on there for me. And uh, so that's what the video is going to be showcasing. So um, um, if you like what you hear, check out the video and uh, fast forward to the parts while I'm babbling and rambling on. But anyway... Here we go. Boom. Hey, what's up, YouTube? Just want to show y'all what I got going on here on the Honda Goldwing today. Uh, fourth generation 97 Honda Goldwing. Kind of got the bike apart a little bit. But uh, right now what I'm working on is uh, changing out this petcock. Um, it hasn't been leaking or anything, but... Uh, like I said on a previous video, I'm just kind of going through the bike and um, changing out things that aren't that expensive, uh, even if they're not a problem right now, just because of the age of the bike. You know, I got this from a previous owner with some pretty good uh, um, maintenance records, but I didn't see anything about the petcock being uh, uh, changed out or... or um, uh, overhauled so that that's what i'm doing today the petcock uh changing the fuel filter which yeah, i've got the fuel filter out right now and then uh, uh and then since i'm here i'm gonna uh undo the cover here and get to the k&n filter and clean it and re-oil it put it back in but i wanted to uh, just show a couple things because like i like i stated previously on another video i'm not doing step-by-step -step videos on how to do stuff and fix stuff that's not what i want my videos or channel to be about but i i will um i like to do little videos like this about what i'm doing featuring the bike you know whatever and um just showing some things that i came across so so th this job isn't that hard um it's just you know disconnecting fuel lines and the clamps and uh and this is a, a plastic uh, thing here that sits under the gas cap so when you're fueling up or if the if the petcock leaks or you're fueling up and spill fuel this is like a reservoir to catch that fuel and then it has a drain tube that connects here to the to a drain right here so that it, the the overflow fuel can run down the drain and down to the bottom of the bike and into the ground but um as i'm getting this petcock out uh i just wanted to show you that it's not that hard it's just disconnecting vacuum line um the the overflow tube 
some of the fuel lines. I got the fuel filter out of the way off there because I'm changing that. But after you and you take the gas cap off to lift this up over the the neck here over the uh, the cap. But on, what what's holding this pet cock on or is uh, it's got these little uh, brackets here that it sits on. But on the bottom there's a screw right here. If you can see that that hole right there, there's one screw, and the screw head is upside down. So it on the back of this there's a I don't know if you can see that, but on the back of this thing there right right in here that's where the screw head is a phillips screw head you got to get a short little stubby screwdriver and uh get that thing out because it, it's 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 upside down so that that's you know probably one of the harder things is manipulating this thing around and then turning it up so you can get to that screw so i wanted to point that out also um i took the console off with the stereo and all that but i did not want to disconnect the wiring at this point i tried to my first time taking this thing apart since I've had it uh, up here uh, on the top here. So I didn't want to disconnect all the wiring. I tried to do one plug and it looked like I was going to have to kind of get, you know, force it or pry it. And I didn't want to jack anything up. So I put a towel up here and where it wouldn't scratch anything, wouldn't scratch the plastic of the console or scratch the, the body parts of the bikes and, you know, put a towel down here on the passenger foot rest. And I've got it, you know, just sitting up here secured with the wiring attached uh, for this project. And it seems to be working out all right. Um, another thing I wanted to point out is I saw somebody on YouTube. Uh, it might have been Herbie's Garage, which he's a good guy. And he, he does a lot of work on uh, uh, on different motorcycles and did a lot of work, has done a lot of work on the Goldwing that he got in the past year. But I think he did what I did. He ordered these uh, fuel filters on uh, Amazon. And... Uh, they're two. They're two in a box, and uh, they don't cost a whole lot. I can't remember how much they were, but not not a whole lot. Can if you try to order the real deal uh, Honda ones or some other manufacturers and get one. But um, so this was a two pack, like Herbie said, and he said that uh, they're not the same size as far as the hose. So he wasn't going to use them. He he reordered uh, or ordered another uh, fuel filter. But and I thought I was going to run on the same problem when I was disconnecting the fuel uh, hoses over here. I thought, you know, when I looked at it, started feeling it, I was like, man, that hose is a lot uh, bigger in diameter than what I'm feeling on my, or looking at my fuel filter. But then I thought, nah, that's the thickness of the hose and then with the nipple and all that. So I said, let me get this thing apart. So here it is, uh, it's apart. And as you can see there, I'm looking at them and it's, to me, they're just about the same size. Uh, I think the nipples are 10 millimeter or 3 8 but I did put the new one might be a hair, and I mean just a hair uh, narrow or skinnier in diameter, just a hair, because I put a 10 millimeter socket on the nipple, and uh, of course it's got a flange here on it, but this one didn't go into the hole of the socket that much and this one just went a smidgen just a little tiny bit so if there's is any difference in size um visually looking hard to tell very hard to tell but if there is a difference in size on those nipples it is just a hair so i don't think it's going to affect the fuel hose on there with the clamps. I think everything is going to work out fine. When I put it back together, there's not going to be any leak. So I was kind of glad about that because I was like, well, I'm going to get this apart and look at these filters. And if I have to order another one or whatever, I'll, I'll have to do it. But now that I got it apart and I'm looking, nah, the hoses are going to fit on there just fine. The clamps are going to be tight enough. And, and the difference in size, if any, is just a hair. So it's not enough to where it's going to leak it's just it's, it's just not that much of a difference if there is really a difference at all so i wanted to point that out uh so i talked about the air filter 
did that. Oh, oh, I wanted to talk about getting this stuff apart because I never took this thing apart. So, you know, I didn't take these pockets off. Some people say, oh, you got to take the pockets off, take all this other pocket out, the whole deep thing, the pocket that sits in here with these screws. I didn't do that because I watched a video of a guy that didn't do that. So I just, you know, took out the screws that hold the console on, turned the handlebars which way, pried the stuff out, was real careful, and it lifted off and came out. Now over here on the fuel filter, uh, for the fuel filter, you've got two nuts that hold these uh, the stems of the uh, side panels on. So you take those off, and then, on, uh, and then on each side, you've got another 10 millimeter nut that goes right here to hold the side kind of down. So to get to the fuel filter better, I just, you know, you just, lift it off the stem there pull it off the stem and once you got this nut on the bottom uh out off then you can just pull it kind of like pull on it and you have some uh, room to work around so so it was a lot less disassembly um that i saw in, a, in some other video i can't remember the uh the youtube name but uh then what i saw from some other people because they were always you know taking this pocket completely out or moving things and and this other guy he didn't didn't do any of that so i was like well man he's he's making it a lot easier for the pet cock and the stuff he's doing and then i'm, I'm looking at this air box and i'm like well that air box top's gonna come off of there i think i've got room to do all that so just wanted to point those things out that's what i got going on today right now uh, I've got several other things that I want to do to the bike, so depending on how long this takes me to rebuild the petcock and get everything put back together and test the test the fuel system, uh, make sure there's no leaks and everything, and the air box, we'll see how much more I continue with, and then uh, I'll just add it to this video. So uh, so that's it for right now, and uh, we'll see what I can get attached to this a little bit later. All right, folks, dipping back in here. Um, after I got that petcock out and I'm starting to rebuild it, I thought, you know what? Since this thing has a K&N &K filter and I'm going to have to clean it if it's dirty and then let it dry, I might as well get it out before I start tearing that petcock apart and uh, clean it up. And that way it can dry while I'm working on the petcock stuff before I oil it up again. But anyway, I just wanted to show an airplane coming by. I just wanted to show that I was able to get to this um air box without taking anything else apart like i said you know um just the stuff i took off for the to get to the petcock and the fuel lines and the fuel filter and i was able to get the air box off three three screws here a screw on each side and then uh two on the in, uh, down on the top here disconnect this um electrical cable sensor there and then the uh top comes off and i had you know i had to slide this thing out of the way and it was in the front of it but kind of pull that out of the way and uh came right off without taking any more plastics off or any more thing off the bike so i just wanted to point that out um uh, most of you or some of you probably already know this but this is my first time at attempting to do any of this stuff since this gold wing is new to me and i'm new to gold wings and um watching other people's video it just if i remember correctly they were doing stuff certain uh, these types of items and they were just taking off more than what was needed um as far as these panels or the bodywork and maybe you know they didn't mention in the videos maybe they were going to do more work to where they needed all that stuff off but they never mentioned that so i just wanted to point that out so the less that stuff that can act actually not come off the bike to get the things the better because uh we all know getting into the guts of this bike into the engine and in the workings of the of the stuff and the parts that need to be serviced and maintained and swapped out the pain in the butt is taking all the plastics off to get there so just wanted to point that out and as i'm looking at the um, air filter there i'll i'll uh, lift it out of the box here but um it, it it's looking pretty pretty clean so i'm not sure if i'm going to clean it i'll take it out and get another look at it but just wanted to pop back in and show you that part in there on the air box and the air filter all right folks i'm back i got this uh petcock rebuilt and uh with a little rebuild kit it wasn't wasn't hard at all um it probably didn't even need to be rebuilt 
everything looked fine on it. The rubber diaphragms and all that were still uh, still good and felt good and healthy. Uh, they weren't deteriorating, but like I said, just because of age and I didn't have any documentation of it had ever been changed out or rebuilt, uh, just because of the age, I went went ahead and did it just so I wouldn't have problems on down the road. But uh, I wanted, let me get my pointer here. I uh, wanted to point something out uh, in case you didn't know. Uh, so, you know, we're calling this the petcock, right? So, other but bi carbureted bikes. We're talking about carbureted bikes. Um, you know, like when I was a kid with dirt bikes or even my uh, sport bikes, crock rockets back in the 90s that were carbureted and and several other type of bikes that I rode with the carburetors, they had petcocks on them because they were carbureted, but the petcocks were on the side down by your uh, leg there. I think on the left side, down by your left leg. And there was three positions. You had an off, an on, and a reserve. So that's not the case on gold wings, as all you gold wing people know. Um, this has a petcock, but... Basically, it's to sh turn the fuel off automatically with vacuum, with this vacuum line right here that connects right there. And it sucks, puts pressure and suction on the diaphragm, rubber diaphragm inside. So when <clears throat> the engine is on and off or running and not running, it, it has suction to let fuel go in. And when the motor is turned off, it turns the fuel off uh, all by itself through vacuum. Now, Gold Wings also don't have a reserve because there's no manual switch on here for on, off, or reserve, or reserve like I just said. It's automatic on this. Um, so they don't have a reserve, but really the reserve is your fuel light that comes on. So when your fuel light comes on when you're on empty and that needle has to get dang near down in the red. Um, or in the red, you think you're going to run out of gas, but finally, finally the light will come on and, um, will come on. It's your little fuel light right here. And you should be, you should be looking at that, uh, when you start up your bike to make sure all your lights are working each time. But, um, that needle has to get down on the red and then that light will eventually come on and that's your reserve. So when that light comes on, basically you have a gallon of gas left to start looking for a gas station so i wanted to point that out and also i wanted to let folks know in case you didn't know that this petcock isn't needed for the functionality of the motorcycle for it running okay this is just to basically the fuel cuts off to the motor when the engine is off but if you happen to be on a trip and this thing starts leaking your bike's going to start running funny it's going to be sporadic it you know no i don't know exactly how bad it'll start running but there's going to be issues and so if you're traveling one you should always have a toolkit um now i do have the goldwing toolkit that came with the bike and probably most folks do but i i carry us i've put together a separate bag of tools that i carry in my harley and then now I'll transfer it to this bike. So whenever I go riding on whatever bike, I transfer the bag of tools because you never know what you're going to need and when you're going to need it. But if you were traveling and your pet cock was leaking and your bike was running like crap or just wouldn't go right anymore, <clears throat> you'd have to pull over and, you know, take the seat off and take some things off here, this console, to get to it. But what you would do to bypass the pet cock to get you riding back to normal again is so here we have the fuel line right here going down to the fuel pump and then it comes up here to the fuel filter right here so the, the fuel is flowing up to the front of the bike then it comes around here into the it comes around here to this petcock and then inside here has a it has a rubber as a big rubber diaphragm on the front and a little rubber piece in the back and with the vacuum it creates suction or whatever so this right here, this little rubber inside, allows the fuel to flow and not flow. So if there was a leak, what you would do is you would totally bypass this petcock. You would, you would get rid of this tube right here, this short piece of fuel line that's connected to the fuel filter and around over here. You would take that off, okay? 
and then you would take this hose fuel this fuel line off right here because it, the fuel comes in here into the petcock and back out and down to the carburetor system okay so this fuel line right here you like i say you take this off the filter and off here and remove it if there was a leak if there was an emergency take that off remove it and then you would take this hose off right here and put this hose on the filter and then you have a direct flow when this hose is connected to this filter you have a direct flow of fuel going to the carburetor system completely bypassing this if there was ever a problem so i just wanted to point that out to you hope that never happens to you but in the event that it does on the road and you've got the necessary tools which you better have if you're especially if you're on a trip uh, that's how you bypass this thing and uh, get back to riding so just want to point that out and uh, I'll continue to do some work here all right folks I'm back once again popping in another time on this video uh, continuing on some maintenance item on the uh, on the gold wing here but um, I had to take this thing apart more to get to these a uh, couple other uh, element filters so as you can see I've got a uh, bunch of the plastics off and whatnot um uh, of course this is my first time taking a gold wing apart because i just got this thing so um it's been a learning process and it hasn't been uh too hard actually it, it seems daunting but uh once you start getting to it uh it you know 20 minutes 15 20 minutes you start undoing screws and stuff and starts coming apart but um i wanted to give a shout out to because i know on some other videos or even this video here i mentioned some uh, other youtube channels like herbie's garage and there's a bunch of youtube channels i've watched for people doing stuff and show step by step step by step stuff but uh one, one that i didn't mention that's really popular on the internet and probably everybody that in the goldwing community knows is the goldwing docks guy so for these two element filters you know the go thank thank god for the goldwing docks guy and uh because he has a lot of documentation a lot of stuff on his uh, website forums and all that and he's got some good videos but he had a detailed step-by-step -step with pictures on his web do uh goldwing docs uh website forum thing showing it step by step and that's how i got this thing apart and located the filters so a shout out to him although i know he's sold his uh uh gl 1500 recently and now he's doing uh, he's got some kind of fun little airplane thing that he's into now but he's he's got all his uh website stuff up and the video is still up for the goldwing people so anyway i wanted to show y'all what i found here and where these things are located so first of all let's start off by saying when we talk about left and right in which most people already know this or should know this when you talk about left side right side it's always talking about when you're sitting on the bike that's what we that's what you mean when you say left side right side when you're sitting on the bike so let's get that clear so the second secondary air filter or the sub air filter the little rectangle thing that i found is on the right side of the bike and it's right down here and i've got it disconnected it's right off uh the side of the breather box here and so it's this thing right here was was you know screwed in there with the screw you take the screw out right here and then uh inside here is the uh filter so a little rectangular filter and uh it's right here in the in the case here there it is right there and if you noticed uh, this thing is i mean you touch it this thing is so old and I don't know when this has been serviced or whatever. This thing is, I'm just barely touching it with my finger and I can feel it just deteriorate and just fall into pieces. It, look at that. Rubbed a little hole in it, just barely touching the thing. So definitely needs to be replaced. And that's where it sits right here, right side of the, of the motorcycle, right off the side of the air box there. With the one screw holding that unit in, comes right off little bottom piece comes off and the filter sits in there now on this one when you put the new one in goldwing doc says that you want to apply a little gear oil to the element and if you don't have gear oil which i don't at the moment uh maybe a little motor oil so you don't want to saturate the thing with it but you want to just lightly coat it and then squeeze any excess out and just have a light coat a film of, of oil on there and that's for that element now let's let's 
walk over to the left side of the bike and look at the cruise control L-shaped element. So we go over here and we find that and basically it's kind of in the same spot. Um, it's off the side more of the gas cap area off to the side and it's right down in here. Uh, it sits right here. So this little plastic piece was connected right up under here. I took a little uh, body panel plastic pry tool and put it in here and put a little force and it popped right out. And then inside there's the filter. There's the filter. So it's an L-shaped cruise control valve filter. Uh, that's where it's located, right there. And this one does not require any oil to be added. So it goes in dry, just take the old one out, put the new one in, pop it back on. So just uh, wanted to point those things out and I'm, as I'm moving along on the process here. And uh, I got the bike stripped down. This is the first time I've ever seen it like this because it's the first time I've ever done this. And I'm thinking even right now that since I've got all this stuff off and I've got the, uh, uh, the bottom lights here, which these are the uh, cornering lights. So um, when you put the blinkers on, these light up. Left blinker, the bottom left one lights up. Uh, put the right blinker, the bottom right one lights up. And I'm thinking while I got this thing apart, I'm thinking I might wire those up because there's some videos out there where people have wired them up. I redid the wiring and didn't look that hard to where they stay on all the time like driving lights. Now, if you do that, you want to remove the halogen bulbs and go with LED because those lights, those plastics on those lights weren't made to stay on all the time with that hot burning halogen bulb inside that glass case and it could do some damage if you have them on there and they're constantly on so if you do this um, make sure you change the bulbs over to LED so they don't run hot I'm gonna see what kind of bulbs are in there and see if I can get some or maybe those ones I put in my position lights um, might fit in there I'm not sure yet because I haven't taken the bulb assembly out of there but if I can get the bulbs quickly or the bulbs I got work look like they're gonna work then I'm gonna redo the wiring on here which shouldn't take that long and and get those things running so when I turn the bike on the headlights all the lights come on and those two lights on the bottom stay on as driving lights fog lights whatever you want to call them instead of cornering blinking lights uh, it, working with the blinkers they're just on all the time give her a more cooler look and all that but right now since I turned since I changed the headlights out and I've got nice white light those bottom lights when they do come on with the blinkers they they got the halogen and they're somewhat yellowish not as bad as the headlights were but they're yellowish so they don't match the look so so um, I change them out get LED bulbs they're gonna look just as bright and uh, stay on all the time as all the time as fog lights so that's the thing I'm continuing on with right now. I wanted to point out those two filter elements. And uh, so those are those two fil filter elements. I uh, got the fuel filter, new one. Uh, I haven't put the K&N filter back in there because I got I to gotta lube it up, but oil it up and then put it back in there. But I've got a paper towel blocking the carbs right now. Uh, because I didn't take I didn't take this side panel off with the CB and all that. I just kind of put it up on top, so I didn't have to disconnect all this wiring here. But anyway, that's that's all I've got for right now. Continuing on with uh, kind of going through the bike, and uh, when I get to another piece that might be interesting or little informational tidbits, I'll pop in again later. All right, folks, I'm popping in here again because I have an issue, and I'm. <laughs> I'm down here laying on the ground. I'm on the left side of the bike here. On the side of the motor here, down by the uh, header. has got the heat shield off and all that as I took it apart earlier. But I, I wanted to let y'all know about something. A problem, a common problem, I think, and uh, something that I wanted to take care of since I'm going through this bike and I got it all apart. Um, my bike, and now this isn't the smoking that I read about when you keep it on the kickstand and oil can leak down the piston or past the rings or whatever and go wing smoke and that's normal and all that i think the smoke out the out the uh, out the uh, mufflers tailpipes but what i had occasionally was when i would start this thing up and run the choke for several minutes it wouldn't do it every time but there would be smoke coming on the outside and it would be 
but it would start smoking and smelling and it would be coming from the bottom down here and then it'd come up uh in front of here in front of the radiators and smoke would be coming out the front i could see it and then uh it would come up by the handlebar smoke would be coming up and it wouldn't do it all the time but sometimes i could see it smoke coming out and it would smell like burning and i, I thought well maybe i had an electrical problem and i tried to look and look and look where it was coming from and i could never find it so when i finally had it apart and i started it up one time it started smoking and i found the problem so what it is is i've got the old shifter seal problem leak and i wanted to show you so i don't know how good this is going to pick up on the camera but um it's i've got a lot of see if i can get a light in here uh got a lot of greasy nasty goo here if i can get in there on the shifter look at all that greasy goo uh back in there just all over the now i clean the splines off here on the shifter thing but you see that goop a mess right there oily greasy stuff and it's all back in there on the bottom there all gooped up and dirty and nasty and wet and greasy there and then all along the uh I don't know if, you, if I can get it, but all along the uh, oil pan there, or the bottom of the engine. Um, so I'm gonna clean all that up. That's where the smoke was coming from because when I, before I had the heat shield off, it was the smoke was coming out of the front of that heat shield, and that's why because it's constantly wet back there. Now it wasn't since I've had the bike, I've ridden it, uh, been on several rides and stuff. I never leaked oil. It, there was never oil dripping anywhere when I parked in my garage. If it sat for a couple days, uh, the oil dipstick, it never went down on the dipstick. So I didn't have an oil leak that was visually like dripping on the bike where I could see it. It wasn't until I got the stuff, stuff off here to where I could find it, where it's constantly wet. And it's been like this from the previous owner for I don't know how long. And it's definitely that seal back there, which was hard to get on camera because it's all nasty and uh greasy oily wet i'm gonna clean all that up pull out that seal and uh luckily i went down to my because i didn't you know i'm trying to do this stuff all at once here while while i've got everything apart whatever i can do and uh luckily i didn't have to order this online i went down to my went down to my honda dealership and they had two of these in stock thank god because this is a common seal on several honda motorcycles and it is the uh part number Part number right there, 91206-286-013. That's the seal. They only had two in stock. I bought both of them, just in case I happen to damage this thing when I put it back in. But they're $3 a pop, so not much money. But uh, you got to be careful when you're taking them out. Um, you've got to get a little pick or a, sh or, or a wood screw and screw it into the rubber and pull it out. And you don't want to damage the... Um, the inside aluminum uh of the casing there with with any kind of picks or screws you want to just just be on the rubber and pull it out and then coat the new one with oil when you push it back in and when you when you're trying to push it back in um flush you want to use the end of a rounded wrench box in wrench and press on it with a nice round smooth surface not anything that could puncture or tear that seal um so how I found out about this, uh, uh, how to do this and all that was on the Goldwing Docs, uh, from the Goldwing Docs guy on his website or his forum. Uh, they showcased this, and he's got the step-by-step, picture-by-picture showing you how to do this. And I'm doing it without taking the headers off, without removing any of that stuff. I'm going to use the extension with the swivel, swivel neck uh, socket thing and um, get it on out. And when I get that seal out, we'll take a look between the old one and the new one and see if we see any physical damage on that thing or if it's stretched out or whatever the case was. But like I said, I had oil all the way up, splashing back, grease everywhere. You can see even on the alternator. Here's my alternator. That's a CompuFire uh, uh, upgraded alternator. But even on the alternator, I've got grease. It's been splashing back for maybe a few years i have no idea but it that grease and oil you know flew back on here and on the bottom of the motor and now i'm cleaning it all up i'm gonna get that seal replaced start from fresh it was all on the um, shift rod right there it was all nasty and on the splines completely wet nasty 
uh, kind of just wipe that off, but it's got a big goop of stuff there. And then you can see here on the actual shifter itself, it was all the inside of that. It's all full of, it's all wet and greasy in there. And I'm going to clean that up. So I definitely had the leak. And that's what was causing the smoke from coming out sometimes as the engine would start to heat up. This, this wet stuff would start to try to burn off and smoke for a little bit. And then it stopped smoking after a while, after 10 minutes or so. And then um, uh, sometimes it wouldn't even smoke at all. So it was hard to, hard to troubleshoot, hard to find with all the plastics and heat shields on and all that. So I knew I had the issue and I knew when I got this thing tore apart that I was going to get down here, track it down and find it. But I know I'm rambling on again. So going to cut it off for now, get to work on this thing. And then I'll pop back in before I put the new seal on and we'll compare those seals, the old seal to the new seal. All right, folks, another pop in here working on the bike. Um, Whew, there's my cardboard I've been laying on right there. I save all these boxes, by the way. My big, anytime you get big boxes, big TV boxes, or big pieces of cardboard, it's good to lay your parts out on. Good to get down on concrete on and lay on instead of being on the hard concrete. Or out if you're on a hard, hard old concrete driveway, I need to have all that replaced. But th these big pieces of cardboard are a savior on your knees and body. But anyway... Let's get back to what I'm doing here. Sorry for all the pop-ins and all that, but I ramble on as it is, so I gotta, you know, I wanna say what I wanna say, stop the video and pop back in, and then I'll have a bunch of segments to put together on my phone and string them all together in one big video. That's just how we do it right here at Honky Tonk, Texas. But anyway, I got that seal out, and it was definitely, I mean, there was no doubt this thing is leaking, no doubt, because all around that seal, like I said in the previous video, uh, segment it it was I mean grime and oil had just been slinging up for no telling how long so here's the here's the shifter seal I put the I put the foot piece back on because you, at first you take it off and then you put it back on because you're going to need to uh, want to lift up on that bolt uh, to get the bolt kind of tilted a little way because this is the process of doing it with the gold wing docks guy looking at his stuff without taking the the uh, muffler, uh, the exhaust off, the headers off the block. So it, it, it was a booger. It was a bear. I cussed a few times out loud. And, uh, but um, anyway, I got it out and damn thing. I'll tell you what, at, at the, at the foot part, at the foot part, it's a, I think an eight millimeter bolt. And then at the, uh, at the, at the, the, screw clamp there uh, up at the um uh ring there at the seal it's a 10 millimeter bolt so damn it i mean it's hard to see without taking the exhaust off but i got on another video to make sure because getting that socket on there is a booger but anyway as you can see look at all that crud that's on there that is that is you know i don't know how long years or whatever riding and it barely barely leaking because like i say it wasn't dripping oil everywhere but definitely had a leak all that nasty goo and just like that stuff right there that goo was all up underneath on the bottom motor slinging up on the alternator on the bottom the whole bottom of the engine the oil pan and all that this stuff was all over so i degreased it cleaned it all up uh the engine part and uh getting ready to put this seal back in new seal but I wanted to point out a couple things. Now, excuse my hands and nails are all nasty and dirty, but th this seal is like a, it's not a soft rubber. It's like a hard rubber plastic, maybe a nylon. It, it's, it's hard. You can hear it. See, hear that dropping? So I didn't have the special puller, seal puller tool. So I tried a little pick on it and I, the pick wasn't strong enough to get it out so i took took my drill with the long um phillip heads screw tip on it and got my drill on there and put a put a wood screw in it or yeah these were wood screws but you want to be real careful let me tell you you want to be real careful when you do this it took took several seconds and of drilling this thing in and uh putting pressure on it to before it bit and pop, popped in there, but you just want it to grab on a little bit. The tip just barely came through there. 
because you don't want to push this through and score the metal on there and th because if the metal scored on the inside there on your aluminum inside your engine block or whatever that casing is you'll have a leak because you got a scratch there so you'd be very careful if you do this process now I really can't tell by looking at these um, seals old and new if there was a problem just by looking at it I mean my eyes want to tell me and it's hard it's hard to tell because I have a screw in it now but that hole in the center of the old one looked to be a little bit bigger so I want to say you know it's worn out there which makes sense because you know this thing when it, 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 this isn't the best design so this thing is is you know rocking around on the spline up there in that casing it, it, it's rocking around putting pressure on that seal when you're you're shifting your this bar should just be going up and down but instead it's rotating all up there too a little bit of slack it's not a good design okay so that's why this seal wears out over time and like i say it's not a uh, dripping oil where you got to really worry about it but it just creates a mess and it's a problem so and like i said i had that smoking problem because it's it's you know, constantly wet there and and um heats up and smokes a little bit sometimes when i would start the bike but i got the seal off and um this is what i used you, you know 10 millimeter bowl with the with the swivel um socket ex thing right there and uh two extensions i had to take two extensions to to get some room but when i was first trying it i had the short socket 10 millimeter socket and i just couldn't get it to grab on there good so i went with a deeper socket and then finally i got it to catch on there turn busted i heard it break loose and then you know it comes off and you got to finagle it a few times and put it on there you're gonna go a few times to get this thing to, to come off but that, that that's what i used and um so i'm gonna clean everything up get this new get, clean all that oily greasy mess on my bike up around the bottom of this thing where it was the rest of the motor and everything get it all clean all nice the inside aluminum wipe that because there's a little bit of oil sitting there now i've got this seal off there's no oil leaking out of the bike while there's no seal on there so there's no issue with this seal being out but there is just a little puddle on the inside uh, a lip there where it's sitting so i'm going to clean all that out wipe all that clean put some oil on the outside of this thing a little oil on the inside of this thing and slip this in and then like i said because i don't have the headers off when you slip it in you're going to want to put it on there and then push you're going to have to push around here so you want to use like a a box um closed in box wrench so you push on here and not damage it tear this thing or scratch it and mark it up to where it'll have a way to leak so that's what i'm doing and here i am rambling and babbling on again but who it was a pain in the you know what i'll just say it was a pain in the ass to get this thing off without removing the headers but i did it now let's talk about one more thing oh i wanted to say too real quick when i'm cleaning all this grease stuff off and i already clean the bottom of the oil pan and i even even my hands before i go wash them with dawn or something um i use a product now i've got it in a windex bottle i'm not pushing any products but i got a jug a gallon jug from walmart of this uh, uh purple power and you just put a little purple power i got it in an old windex bottle it's a degreaser and you can put it on you know uh car your car it's for automotive it's even for household stuff you can put it on a lot of things it's like biodegradable so it doesn't damage paint and chrome and all that you can clean chrome paint carpet seats all kinds of stuff in your car in your house your motorcycle it works really good so you put a little in mix it with water and you get a gallon jug concentrate last you forever i spray this stuff directly on my hands and just again using an old windex bottle and i spray this stuff directly on my hands and wipe them off before i actually go inside the house and finish washing them off and uh, that's what i'm going to spray on all this stuff all these parts and the rest of my engine to clean it up and spray the paper towels down with and clean it up it works really good so now let's get to the uh last part i want to talk about on this before i go putting this thing back together now did you think for one second that i'm going through all this trouble of doing all this maintenance on my bike tearing this thing apart going through it all the filters and elements and all kinds of stuff i'm looking at as i'm going through it do you think for one second that i was going to put this thing back together with a brand new seal and not fix the slop in this badly designed shifter hell 
no so amazon just showed up in time and i got the shifter brace so there's my shifter brace pieces and when i put this thing back together that shifter brace is going on there and i won't have that slop anymore it takes the slop out of the end of this thing moving around like this and it'll only be the straight turning like it should when you're shifting up and down so I wasn't going to put this thing back together without this. So this showed up just in time. I was able to get the seal today from my local Honda uh, motorcycle shop. And then, of course, I had to, I had to order this uh, uh, last night, yesterday, and uh, got it here, uh, paid a little extra to get it next day. And uh, that's the shifter brace and uh, putting that on. And then everything, when I get everything put back together, that thing's going to be solid and last for, I hope, years and not have any more problems. So, again, just want to pop them back in. And, uh, ay, 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 it's, it's always something. Always something. So, uh, I'm continuing on. Uh, get back soon. All right, folks, popping in here again with another little segment of the maintenance stuff i'm doing and I'll string them all along make one long video out of it but uh uh got that last video i left off with the got the shifter seal out of there and then i showed you all the the shifter brace that i bought that i was going to put on so i'm going to sh uh, show you that now like i said before in other videos my channel is not a how-to of how to do it i used goldwing's doc goldwing docs for that his website and the pictures and step-by-steps and all that stuff. You got good information on there, lots of how-tos, and that's that's what I kind of used in the process. I'm doing all this, and then excuse the uh, noise here. I got fans running, fans in the corner there in my garage, and uh, one on the floor here. It's been in the 70s earlier all week and nice and cool, and here in Spring, Texas, and today for whatever reason it was 85 and humid, so I had to have these fans going to keep me cool and keep the dang mosquitoes out of here and off of me. Mosquitoes can't contend with this uh, high wind they're putting out here, so they're not strong enough to fly against it. But anyway, uh, I wanted to show you what I did here, because this thing was, I tell you what, this thing was a pain in the ass. I mean, I was throwing around F-bombs and GDs like crazy. My neighbors probably were, over, you know, thinking, what the hell's going on over there? But anyway, it was so frustrating. And it's like, you know, every, it's it's like... Every time I want to work on something, you know, my motorcycles, my cars, or whatever, I know how to do it, the steps I got to do, the procedures, I know what I'm doing. And then you get down in there and you can't get to a bolt right and you have to hold your tongue right and you need to hold your body weight up a certain way and it's hard to maneuver and then you got to get the tools around. And then it's like you wish you had somebody else there to help you or another set of hands and it just drives you nuts. So I had to get up and walk down my driveway a couple times and just walk away from it, come back and start over refreshed and... And I, I just wondered if other people go through this stuff. It's just frustrating. But anyway, I'll show you. I'm, I'm babbling and rambling again. But here it is, you know. It's Friday night. And here I am on a Friday night. I'm not out dancing, honky-tonking dancing like I usually am. Because I'm out here working on this thing. But um, I want to show you what I did. So I got that uh, shifter seal in. And going by, the, I did it through the process on gold wing, gold wing docks without taking the headers and stuff off. Using the... Uh, uh, swivel uh, extensions and swivels and getting uh, getting down in there uh, let's see if I can position this right here oh yeah uh, getting right in there it's kind of out of focus but you can see that there it is you see that's the dog leg end of the shift shaft with the nut right there and then that black ring is the seal doesn't want to focus good right there so that's replaced and uh, that was coming over the top to access it but put I got it off but putting it back in I couldn't I couldn't get it in that way it, I struggled with it then here's the uh, shifter uh, shifter brace I put on so this thing works good I had to now I got it put on there and then I had to cut the um, I had to cut the um, heat shield behind it cut me a little section out because it was hitting so I had to make room because it, it, it needs it needs to be free so you got all the play you need and uh so I had to cut that right here. It's not an issue, but uh, that shifter steel uh, shifter brace works great, like it's supposed to. Now it just lets the the shaft go straight up and down without uh, twisting around. You know, it no longer that can it rotate or wiggle wobble around. 
and uh, that's what wears that seal out, that center hole. It wobbles around after a few years, and then it starts leaking and has a slow leak. It stays constantly wet with all the sludge and grime back there. And uh, so that's what I had and why I had to fix it. And then I was went back putting the brace on because uh, I wasn't, you know, I'm going to fix it right, do it right. But um, so, and when you put this thing back together, the, uh, the, the colored heat shield on the outside right there, uh, I, you got to make some cuts on that with some tin snips too. So when you cut that one, um, you're going to want to, uh, if you got some old primer, old paint around, you're going to want to paint the edges of where you cut because that, that'll be fresh cut exposed metal and you don't want that to start rusting. So you want to mask up and tape off your nice paint there and then just paint some crappy primer because you're not going to be able to see it, but you, do, you don't want it to rust. And uh, so also I, I, I did some more cutting on my bike. I uh, made me an, an access hole right here. Um, because it like I said it, it was hard to get to so instead of coming from the top I came in uh, let me hold my phone in a different way I came in from the bottom to put it back put it back on came in through here so I, I cut the heat shield straight across took some pliers and bent it down so I could get the uh, ratchet and socket up there to the dog leg nut up in there and I, I know you can't see it but it's up there and uh, so and it's not a problem to cut this so, you know, I'm just going to take my pliers and bend it back up and push these sharp corners out of the way so I don't cut myself in future service or whatever. But um, uh, now I have an access hole for as long as I own this bike forever. I mean, hopefully I won't have to be going back in here and doing this stupid seal again for years to come. But if I ever do have to get in there, I've got a access hole now. I can just bend it back down and get in there. And uh, it doesn't hurt anything because that heat shield already has openings in it and uh and i'm just going to bend it back in place so it's not that big of a deal and you, you can never see it so it's not like it's damaged or anything but um that's what i did there so just wanted to point that out i'm rambling and babbling on here on a friday night but i finally got that all that stuff put that back together after all the f-bombs and cussing and all that it's done so I think I'm going to call it a night, rest up, and start on some more stuff tomorrow. So uh, I'll dip in again whenever I hit something else. Hey, hey, hey. Popping in for another segment this morning. And it is a beautiful, I mean, just a gorgeous day here in Spring, Texas. Look at that. I mean, clear blue sky. 69 degrees when yesterday was 85 and humid 69 degrees beautiful blues clear sky and again i'm working on my bike instead of riding the damn thing but anyway we got to do what we got to do all right what i got going in this segment is uh i'm doing the clutch slave cylinder down below there you can reach it from uh, underneath the bottom there by the center stand go up and uh, take it off but uh, it wasn't leaking or anything uh, I think I, like I said in in a previous video I was going to tell you what kind of stuff I was going to do so here I am for the clutch slave cylinder and I'm glad I'm doing it because I'm going to show y'all the uh, so I, again like I said it wasn't leaking so I didn't have any issues but because of age and uh, of the bike and then i know that the the maintenance the regular maintenance other than oil changes hadn't been done since 2013 because the guy i bought it from quit riding it regularly just around the neighborhood so he just changed the oil from 2000, 2013 on and nothing else really that's why i'm going through the whole bike but anyway i want to show you so here i am here's the master uh cylinder and you know of course it's drained but it's all you know caramel color it was real sludgy and thick uh, you can see right there how thick that stuff is there's still some uh, stuff in there uh, that's real thick and gooey so I'm gonna uh, clean that up get that all cleaned out of course and uh, so it definitely needed to be flushed at least but since I was gonna do this I wanted to rebuild that clutch uh, the slave cylinder so it's all dot four all the brakes and uh, both brakes um, cylinders and stuff and 
the clutch used dot four brake fluid as most of you already know and whenever you're dealing with brake fluid brake fluid is very corrosive so you need to have you know towels and stuff protecting your bike paint the metals because that brake fluid gets on there and you don't wipe it off quick enough it can it can ruin the paint it can corrode it can do nasty stuff so always protect uh when you're messing with brake brake fluid always protect the uh areas around and then uh, of course as you see here i got my cardboard that i like to lay on and sit on and it helps my knees and my body and i got cardboard underneath the bike so if i got drips or something like that drips on the car cardboard or if parts fall off it hits the cardboard and not the hard concrete and have any damage of it which i will show you over here let's go out to the to the slave cylinder and the reason why i was bringing that up is because i got um when i took this off um you know i watched the gold docks video and website and stuff he had to press his cylinder out with air well when i took mine apart i mean the, the cylinder thing uh with a piston um basically just fell out and i had to kind of catch it with my hand a little bit and then it hit the cardboard so i'm glad i had that cardboard there because it it um you know to cause it from doing any damage and uh, instead of hitting the direct concrete because i bought the rebuild kit but i did not buy a new cylinder i'm gonna chance it hopefully i don't have to wait get another one and wait but i'm gonna clean it up the the uh piston and all that and then inside there see all that sludgy caramel stuff and uh so so uh, you know i'm glad that i am rebuilding this because look look at all this stuff i mean it's nasty in there it's like i say nothing was leaking but look at all that crusty look at all that crusty stuff just around there and nastiness and so it definitely definitely needed attention uh, you can see all that nastiness right there. Just all oh, just nasty, nasty, nasty. So even though it wasn't leaking because of the age, gonna definitely rebuilding it. And also I wanted to show you what I use um, underneath the bike on the cardboard. Drips can get on the cardboard. I don't care. I just wipe it up. But to catch most of it, I use this as a little... Uh, lunch meat container <laughs> so i just stick that underneath there and when stuff start the stuff starts dripping out catch that in my little lunch uh meat container and i save these with the tops too some of them put bolts and things in there or stuff like that but um here's my rebuild kit uh got the uh it's the all balls racing uh, and that's the part number on there but that's the that's the kit it's got the banjo bolts and the spring and the seals and all that stuff um so I'm, I'm gonna clean it up rebuild it oh the three bolts that hold the uh slave onto the housing underneath they're all the same length i wasn't sure so uh i was kind of keeping them in order in case there was a different length but they're all the same length because this is the first time i'm doing it here's the push rod the little push rod it's you know dirty and stuff greasy i'm gonna have to clean that up and re-grease it and but um yeah definitely needed to be done and i'm glad that i made the decision to do it because like i said it wasn't leaking but if there had been a leak um you'd be able to see it. you'd know on your bike if it was leaking because the casing uh, uh underneath this this uh, slave cylinder it would be like i said dot or brake fluid in general is corrosive so if it had been leaking not only would i sit would have seen it and i suspect it would be wet but it would be the casing would be finished on there would kind of probably be bubbled up and uh there'd be some kind of, of damage to the to the finish of it from the brake fluid being on there and touching it for a long period of time so uh but i didn't have that like i said but still glad i'm, I'm rebuilding it because it definitely just by the looks of it it definitely needed it and it definitely not only did it need to be rebuilt but just the fluid itself needed to be changed that's all caramel color sludgy thick no not supposed to be like that but oh and let me tell you a, a little uh tip too when you go to bleed uh refill your your master cylinder and uh bleed it through and all that and you start connecting everything when you put the slave cylinder back on there after it's rebuilt do not connect the uh the hose the uh fluid hose 
with the banjo bolts yet. Let it hang down because what you want to do is you want to fill the reservoir, reservoir after you clean the, the master cylinder up top, the reservoir out, get it all cleaned out. You want to fill it up with fresh brake fluid and then you want to, you know, pump it and get it draining down the tube and because there could be, you know, sludge inside that, inside the hose going down, there could be sludge buildup on the walls or, or in the little hole from the master cylinder it could be blocking and dirt and stuff's going to go down that hose so don't connect the hose yet after you got it all installed fill it with fresh fluid pump it let it drain and let it push out any old sludge let it push out any old dirt dirt completely through the holes down to where the banjo bolts are and that banjo bolt is until you got nice clean fluid coming out and then and then once you've got nice clean fluid coming out and you don't have any more in the reservoir up top then go ahead and connect your um connect the hose up with your new washers the banjo washers on the banjo bolt connect it up tighten it up and then you're ready to start um adding fluid and bleeding it so then you'll use the bleeder nipple uh right here with the wrench and you'll uh, do the old process of squeezing like maybe squeeze the clutch a couple times and then hold it and as you hold it uh, break the bleeder open and then close it and then and then release the clutch and same thing pump it once or twice and then close it open the bleeder drain some out close the bleeder and then release the clutch and you want to keep doing that several times several times till you get the air out of there till you get fresh fluid flowing through and it's just solid clean fresh fluid flowing into your little catch bottle um, with the tube hanging off this thing into your little you need to get you a little a tube clear tube that fits on here into a catch bottle i use like a gatorade bottle and drill a hole in the top so the hose will fit snugly into the top of the gatorade bottle and sit down in there and fill up the gatorade bottle but um that's the process of uh, getting all this done and uh, like i always say here i am babbling again but it's not a how-to but just as i'm doing it i want to pop in with little tips and tricks so i'm going to continue on get it all put back together i'm not gonna have another pop in with the bleeding and all that stuff because um you can get that on gold wing doc gold wing docs and uh, other people's videos so i'm gonna get back at it all right folks continuing again with another pop in so started off in the morning a beautiful day Worked on the bike a little bit, then life happens. I had to go run errands, had to do other stuff, and then came back in the late afternoon and got back in my nasty, oily clothes again. And uh, now it here, now it's nighttime, about eight o'clock or so. And uh, I fin, I just want to let you know, I I I finished, I got that uh, where I left off was that rebuilding that clutch slave. So um, I got that rebuilt everything went good got got to put back on uh cleaned out the master uh the the clutch master up top cleaned all the goop out of there and stuff and i mentioned that when you're putting it back together you don't want to put the clutch slave back on and then at attach the um hydraulic line with the new banjo uh washers right off the bat you want to let that thing dangle and after you get the master cylinder up top cleaned out, you want to fill it up with fluid. And I let it go a couple times and fill it up with fluid, pump the clutch a little bit, and let gravity do its work. And let it push any kind of old sludge that's still in that line or if, the, if it's aligned with that old sludge. And I, I did that. And sure enough, it pushed out a lot of caramel color, old sludgy looking fluid it it uh took a little bit because you know it's working with gravity and then you you pull the clutch sometimes but um it drip 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 and then sometimes it start dripping faster and it pushed out all that sludge i did it like two or three maybe three times and uh just completely clean that line out and then uh once it um uh once i saw that okay totally fresh fluid was coming through there dripping out of there into my little catch basin thing there my little lunch meat catcher um then i knew it was clean then i put the uh put the banjo boat bolt back on there using the new crush washers put it all together and then i did the uh filling it up and doing the bleeding process and you know all that stuff that uh i talked about earlier um the process that i was because I, I don't use a um a uh a suction device or whatever one of those things i just i just pull in the clutch hold it open the 
uh, open the bleeder, close it, let off the clutch, and I do that over and over and over. I went through like two reservoirs of fluid, but got it all working. It's all stiff, nice. Everything's good on that. But um, so, that, so I'm getting closer to be able to put this thing back together. But I just wanted to uh, let y'all know that I talked about uh, possibly doing the uh, <clears throat> cornering lights, changing them to driving lights, and talked about how. Uh, in the earlier segment about if you do that you need to make sure you get led bulbs for that so i i did that process and i want to show you here in case you don't know if you've never seen them these are the um old halogen bulbs that were in there so that's what the base looks like and uh they kind of push with pressure you you push them down twist them and they lift up and then you put the new ones in put them on the contacts line the line the deals up on them and push down and twist lock them in so both halogens are out and they're leds uh now and the reason why you don't want to make them driving lights like i said before i'll say it again is well i just read this on the internet so i you know who knows what you can believe on the internet <laughs> but it kind of makes sense um i just read that the glass or the plastic lenses on the um those cornering lights were not designed to um, take those hot halogen bulbs uh, being on all the time. They were only supposed to be on when the blinkers come on. And so it could be that uh, if you if you uh, snip the wires there to make them stay on all the time, the halogen bulbs could possibly do damage to those lenses. Uh, is what I read so but I was going to change mine out to LED anyway so they're all LED they run cool and um, and I watched another guy's video of, you know how you do it you get into your um, uh, relays right right there there's two relays we're looking at right there boom boom left and right um, you you pull it out and uh, cut the green wire so I I uh damn it my cord's hung up I um <clears throat> Somebody said pull the green wire out, but I tried to pull on a little bit. Nothing was coming out. So I kind of got up where it's like kind of taped up high from the relay, high from the relay, and took little little dikes, a little bit. You got to be careful so you don't snip two wires or something. But I cut the green wire up high. So if I ever wanted to go back to make them cornering lights, I would have enough to, from the relay and to where I cut it, I could splice in a piece of a wire. But that's never going to happen because I want these things on all the time. And, uh, cause the more lights you got, the better, uh, even in the daytime, I want, you know, I like all my lights on. And so people can see me, whether it's daytime, nighttime. And, uh, I think it looks good. So let me, um, go over here and turn off the, uh, garage light real quick. And then I'll, I'll show you what they kind of look like. I know I just got it. It's not put back together. Obviously you see that it's not put back together. I just got them propped up when I was testing them as I cut the wire on the relay and uh, make sure everything was working right. So got them propped up for a little uh, show right here. So let me turn off my garage light and then I'll turn on the lights over here. Walk over here and do it. Ooh, it's dark. I got my little, got my little work light here. So let me get the bike lights on. Boom. And let me turn my light flashlight off here. Now we're looking. And there it is. Um, obviously, I in another video did, I talked about how I changed out the two headlight bulbs to LED. And then I turned the, uh, changed out the two position lights on the sides of the headlights there to LED bulbs on those. So they're ni nice and white, running cool, bright. And now the cornering lights are now driving lights or fog lights or whatever you want to call them and they're led bulbs and they're going to stay on all the time since i snipped the green wire and so as soon as you turn your key on all the lights come on and those lights will be on at all times and the leds they pretty much match with the headlights and the cornering lights so everything is going to look beautiful and um they'll be a little bit stronger my battery's a little bit low because i've been turning this thing on and off on and off even though i've had it on my battery tender but if i had the bike running it'd be a little bit stronger because uh, it'd be running about 14 um uh, volts if it with the bike was running i'm getting down to about just at 12 points you were just under uh, almost going down into the end of the 11s but uh 
Um, just wanted to show you that, that uh, if you're looking to do that, how nice it can look. But make sure you change those cornering lights to LED bulbs. And then all you got to do is snip that wire and those lights will be on all the time. And you got it's going to have a nice look. And I'll show the when, when I put the bike back together. I'll be working on that tomorrow, get the, everything put back together after all the maintenance items that I did. And then um, I'll crank it up, start it, have it running for the last the last segment of the video for this whole video thing. I'm going to make one big video. I'll have the bike running and uh, walk around it and all that and talk about it and show the lights again. So anyway, going to uh, end it here and call it a night.